Okay, kids, it's a moment you've been waiting for. Let's get those polyatomic ions learned. A couple notes on decoding your yellow card. Remember the yellow uh, reference sheet you were given at the beginning of the year? First of all, the shaded boxes represent the most common ions in a family. The symbols you see, don't worry about them too much. All they do is they show commonalities between ions on that table. It just means that there's, they're somewhat related and you're going to have to figure out how they're related and you're going to probably want to study them together. Sometimes you're going to see a strange statement. These strange statements are going to refer to a memory device to help you to memorize the ions. The columns, you might note, are somewhat arranged by similar charges. First two columns are the one minuses and one pluses. The second two columns are mostly two minuses, a two plus in there. And the fifth and sixth column are a mix. There's only two negative three ions. There are blank places. The blank places are not there for any particular reason except to arrange the table um, so that things were together that were related. So whatever you want to draw there, go ahead. If you want to draw Lewis dot structures, knock your socks off. They're very helpful. All right, so the best ways to study. First of all, you got to make a flashcard, put the ion on the charge on one side, and put the name of the ion on the other side. Start with small groups of cards at a time. Do not overwhelm yourself. Use common symbols to begin. So, in other words, if you see a bunch of sigmas, that looks like a, a kind of a square-looking E, uh, with lots of angles on it, then put those cards together, study them first, then mix them up, and then throw more cards into the pile. Make sure that when you study at the end, everything's mixed up, because usually the hardest thing is to remember the charges. So, why are we torturing you? We don't mean to torture you. We're trying to educate you. These are verbs in chemistry. You can't speak without them. You can't communicate without them. Your life will be miserable for the rest of the year if you don't learn these. We constantly get thank you notes from kids who have gone to college and say, they say thank you very much for making us learn those polyatomic ions. I am so far ahead of everybody else and I know exactly what's going on in my chemistry class. If you don't learn these ions, you will be clueless for the rest of the year. Even if you're moving to regular chemistry next semester, you will regret not learning these ions. We are not lying to you. So let's go. The first slide here that I want to show you that relates to the ions is about naming related ions. Now this is written down to the, to the right side of your yellow reference sheet. Okay, So what you can see here is that the box that says chlorate in it is shaded. It's shaded because it's the most common ion in this family. The most common ion in a family always gets the ending A-T-E. Now if you look up to the perchlorate box. The only thing that you're going to notice that's a little bit different about chlorate and perchlorate is that perchlorate has one more oxygen. Per, eight. All right, so the per means hyper. So if you're hyperactive, you have a lot of energy. If you're per eight, you have more oxygens, one more than the eight ion. If you look at the eight ion, you will notice that there is one oxygen less than the eight ion. If you look at the hypochlorite ion, you can see hypo is your prefix, ite is your suffix, and what this shows is that you now have two less oxygens than your most common ion, the eight ion, or you can also look at it that you have one less oxygen than the ite ion. So look at the number of chlorines that you have. In all cases, you have one chlorine. In all cases, your charge is one negative. The only thing that varies here are the number of oxygens. All right? Eight is the most common ion. Per eight, one oxygen more. Eight, one less oxygen than the eight. Hypoite, two less oxygens than the eight, or one less than the eight. Let's move on. So, if you take a look and you learn those real quick, and you look at those in reference to these, what you're going to notice is that the most common ion in the iodate family is IO3-1-. 
nitrate is NO3 one minus. Well, what you just saw previous to this was that chlorate was CLO subscript 3 with a minus charge. Make sure you're keeping your subscripts as subscripts. They refer to the element in front of them. They tell us how many atoms there are of the element that they are after. And then keep this charge up high. Okay? So if you look at iodate, it's really the same as chlorate. If you look at nitrate, it's really the same as chlorate and iodate. So if you can remember chlorate is your most common ion in the, in the chlorate family, and you know how to get to perchlorate, you know how to get to chlorite, you know how to get to hypochlorite, and if you remember that nitrate and iodate are the same, then you can move from iodate to iodite and nitrate to nitrite. So really, if you look at these first eight ions, if you just know three of them in the naming system, you've got eight down. One way that might be helpful, I remember when I first learned these, I remembered nickel, and I'm not talking about the nickel on the periodic table, I'm talking about nitrogen, iodine, and chlorine. All of these have the same formula when they become nitrate, iodate, and chlorate. Okay, so if we go back up to perchlorate, what you can see right next to perchlorate is permanganate. These two formulas are the same, except, of course, perchlorate has chlorine in it and permanganate has manganese in it. So this arrow here is simply referring back over to here. You still have the prefix per, you still have the suffix eight for both of these. So just remember, permanganate is the same as perchlorate. Three hens in a chicken coop. Unfortunately, I forgot to write this down on your reference sheet, so if you want to add it, go ahead. Three hens in a chicken coop. Well, this is one of those little devices to help you remember. Acetate is our ion, and there are two ways to write the formula for acetate. This first way up here is called a molecular, I'm still learning to use the pen, a molecular formula. This second formula here is called a structural formula. Acetate is organic. Acetic acid is an organic acid. Okay, And what this means is that it's carbon-based. When we draw the structure for acetic acid, or actually the acetate ion in this case, what we have is we have two carbons holding hands, we have a double bonded oxygen and a single bonded oxygen off one of the carbons, and then we have an extra electron. Okay, this is a carbon right here. That's a carbon. All right, so if you look at this formula here, CH3, this is your CH3 over here, and if you look at your COO, here's your C, here's your oxygen, here's your oxygen, here's your extra electron. Three hens in a chicken coop. Here we go. You ready for those hens? Here are your hens right here, three hens in a ch -ch -ch chicken coop. Uh-oh, the P's missing. Your negative sign tells that story. No P. So three hens in a chicken coop. Now, if you look at this structural formula and you just count up your carbons, you're going to have two carbons, you're going to have three hydrogens, and you're going to have two oxygens, and you're going to have an extra electron. There's the molecular formula, and you might note that it's alpha, C, then H, then O. Okay, Ide. Oh my gosh, Ide. Well, Ide is something that is usually going to be a negative monatomic ion like oxide and sulfide, so I'm sorry about this, but we do have a few Ides in the polyatomic pile. One of the things that's kind of interesting about both of these, which is why I put them together, the charge is minus one on both of them, but neither of them have subscripts. So it's one carbon, one nitrogen, and an extra electron. Here's an oxygen right here with the hydrogen and an extra electron. It's kind of interesting to note, if you look at the Lewis dot structure for this, 
you have carbon triple bonded to nitrogen and you've seen something similar this, to this before. You have carbon, total of four plus five plus one electrons, here's nitrogen. So it's essentially like looking at nitrogen double bonded to itself. Okay, but of course that's an extra electron that you have there, so there's your Lewis dot structure. Okay, your Lewis dot structure for hydroxide, two, four, six, all right. Here's the dot that hydrogen brings in, H, and then here's your extra electron, okay? So these guys are polyatomic because there's more than one atom, all right? But they do end in ide. All right, so let's be positive about this whole thing right now. Our last couple of ions in the first couple columns actually have a positive charge, so that was kind of being silly with you there. These are the only two ions in those first two columns with the positive charge. Ammonium has a beautiful tetrahedral structure. I don't have a very good way to remember this, but both of these ions end in eum, I-U-M. All right, here's the Lewis dot structure for ammonium. The Lewis dot structure for hydronium is just like water except you have an extra proton. So it's a little bit different. So all you have to think about is you get hydronium from adding oxygen and a proton up. Okay, here's your proton. So how many hydrogens all together? Three. How many oxygens? One. And since you're down an electron, it's going to be a positive charge. Okay, so once again, you have mu here, the same symbol. Both of these are 1 plus, and they both end in em. So that's why I put them together. Okay, so this is the end of the first screencast. I will be making a second screencast. I hope you enjoyed this. Play it a couple times. Look at this and learn.